There can be issues when using the from body attribute in an ASP.NET Core web API. So how do we go about troubleshooting when the from body attribute is not working properly? We've made a JSON request to an API endpoint. However, we're finding that the parameter with the from body attribute is returning null. Or maybe we're being greeted with a 415 unsupported media type error. In this video, we're going to have a look at why the ASP.NET Core from body is not working or returning null. Now, for more ASP.NET Core tutorials, visit roundthecode.com, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash roundthecode, and follow us on Twitter, it's at roundthecode. So to demonstrate this, we're going to use an ASP.NET Core Web API in Visual Studio. Now in front of me, I've already created an ASP.NET Core Web API. And what we're going to do is we're going to build up a controller and we're going to see where we need to include the from body attribute and the from query attribute. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new model. So I'm going to create a new item. It's going to be a new class and we're going to call it customer. Now inside this customer, we're going to add some properties. We're going to add a first name. And we're also going to add a surname. Now the whole point of this is we're going to use this as part of the parameter in our action. What the parameter will do is when we actually send out the request, we're going to request in the first name and the surname. And all being well, it will bind our actual request to the properties within this model. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new controller and we're going to call it web controller. We're going to set up a route for this. So it's going to be pointing to web, so forward slash web. Now we're going to set up our two actions. The first one, we're going to be expecting a type of customer to be returned. We're going to call it get and pass in our model again as the parameter as part of the request. And we're going to return the customer. We also need to declare that it's a get method. We're also going to do the same thing for the post as well. So the whole point of this is we've got our customer model in here. We're going to pass in the first name and the surname, and we're going to return the actual response from the customer to see if it's actually binded it properly or not. So let's run that now and give it a test in Postman to see if it's actually going to work properly or not. So that's now running for us. So let's give it a test in Postman. We're going to try our get request first. So we're passing in the query string first name of David, surname of Grace. Give it a test. As you can see, it's outputting the same things that we're requesting in. Let's try it with the post. Now we're going to do three different tests with the post. We're going to try it with form data first, part of the content type. Let's give that a go and see if it works. So yeah, once again, it's returning our first name and our surname as expected. Let's try it now with this one. So the x dub form URL encoded. And as you can see, that's still working as well. Now let's try it with a JSON request. So we've selected JSON. We're passing in a JSON request, as you can see there. First name of David, surname of Grace. Give it another run. As you can see there, it's returning a 200 response. But the first name and the surname is null. So how do we go about fixing that? Well, what we can do with that is what we're going to use is we're going to use the from body. And this is where we use it on here. So if we give that a run again and give it another test in Postman to see if it's actually going to work or not. OK, so let's give that another run. And as you can see, that's now working for us. Now, you might be watching this and thinking, well, that's not how it's behaving in my particular example. Well, there might be a reason for that. And I think the reason might be is using an API controller attribute. Now in Visual Studio, you can actually create an API controller using a template that's already set up. 
and I'll show you how it works because it behaves in a slightly different way. So in order to do that, we're going to copy our web controller and we're going to rename it to web API controller. We're going to change the class and change the root as well. Now the one difference here is that we're going to use the API controller attribute. Now if you set up an ASP.NET Core Web API in Visual Studio, you'll have the weather forecast controller. Now by default, it will have this API controller attribute assigned to it. So in order, because that API controller is in there, it actually behaves in a slightly different way. So if we remove the from body, and what we're going to do is we're going to run that again and we're going to test these out in Postman to see how it behaves, how it behaves differently to the current one. So that's now running for us. So let's give it a go with the get request. Well, as you can see there, we've got that 415 unsupported media type. So the get request is not working for us at the moment. Let's try it with the post requests. So we're going to try it with our form data content type. Again, we're getting a 415 error there. Let's try it with xww form URL encoded. Once again, it's an unsupported media type error. But let's try it with a JSON request. Let's throw that in, shall we, and see what happens. As you can see there, that is actually working for us. So when we're using the API controller attribute up here, we don't need to include the from body attribute as part of the post request. Now with the other post requests, typically with an API, if you use any API with a post request, you'll always pass in the JSON as a request. You wouldn't use the other content types. But how do we go about fixing the get request if we want to use a query string? Well, this is where we use the from query attribute. So if we stop the application, and up here we're gonna put from query. Let's give that another run and see if it actually resolves our issue. So let's give that another test. And as you can see, that's resolved our issue. So it's now binding our properties as part of our request. So when building an API controller, the best bet is to use the API controller attribute as part of the controller. By doing that, you won't need to include the from body attribute as part of the parameter when making a post request. However, if you're doing a get request using query string, you need to remember to use the from query attribute as part of the parameter. Now, thanks very much for watching and hit a like on the video.